2.17 then. The Warrior Hollock coming next, but Daryl Halligan joins us. DJ, you were there, sideline. Uh, you get to feel it. You get to see it up close. How good were the Warriors, mate? i tell you what. This place like Combank Stadium and a lot of the stadiums you get to around here, it's a real privilege, mate, to actually be there on the sideline. You're the away team. And in particular, on uh, Saturday night, there was a chant going around the stadium in the second half. Of, warriors, Warriors, you know. And I mean, the Parramatta faithful must have absolutely hated it. You know what I mean? But it just goes to show how many Warriors supporters were there. Um, and it was great to see them in voice as well. So, yeah, it, it is a treat. It's a real treat sometimes to sort of like just be on the sideline and just ride in amongst all the players. That was one of the things I noted down first because we heard it in Wollongong a couple of weeks previously as well. The chant went up after about five minutes. The players must absolutely love it when they hear it. Well, I guess, you know, like it can be a little bit of a... It's what you make of it, isn't it? It's a little bit home away from home. And if you're in a, you know, you've got plenty of confidence and you're winning football games, you're scoring tries and that, then, you know, your supporters are going to be more up and in voice than, than if you're the opposition. So... Um, yeah, it's a fun period to be part of, um, and it's something the guys deserve. Um, I love their style of play. I think the Warriors' style of play this year is a different style of play to what we've seen previously. Um, if you think of um, some of the battering rams we've had in our outside backs, you know, and guys that have done really well too, you know, Manu Vatuvei, um, Big Ken Mamalo, and they used to sort of like put a dent in the line before the rest of the team got to work. And now we've got the likes of, you know, Dallin Watani, Zelezniak and uh, Marcelo Montoya. And they're a little bit different. But the execution of the backs in terms of their pass catch, you know, pace and how they hit the corners and all that sort of stuff, it's a different style to watch. And it's, it, it's actually quite breathtaking when they, when they get it together. And they're doing it more often than not. Execution, that's a key word there. I mean, I was just because well, I wanted you to explain that difference. It's, 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 look, we saw it with the All Blacks uh, against Argentina as well. It's attacking with real pace from everywhere, and especially those short balls when they come off. They just, I mean, they just, it's, it's really electric to watch, mate. Well, mine is, uh, my point is, uh, is when I watch the game, I watch the guys off the ball as much as, you know, what's happening on the ball. So, you know, yes, the ball can be put out in front of Sean Johnson and he runs onto it nicely and there's some players on, on the outside of them. But when there's a lot of players in and around the ball and a, a quick tip on and then another quick tip on and it's moving ball to space, if you're not in that space and, and ready to catch it, then you're at fault. So it sort of heightens the alert sort of levels of everyone in the area. Who, who is like, oh, this could be coming my way. Yes, this is more likely coming my way. I better be there. You know what I mean? Whereas in the past, that hasn't really been the case. And I think that's the case right across the comp. Um, and, and that's why the game has been so enjoyable. Yes, we've had a winning team to support this year in terms of the Warriors. But even in, in rugby union, you've seen the Crusaders do it for, for years. They'll shift the ball to the outside and they'll have their you know, second rowers or their number eight or Lucy hanging on, on touch because they're going to get the ball to space where no one else thinks they're going to be. And they use that space really, really well. So, you know, it's a philosophy that Andrew Webster's had and, and, and lived at Penrith for, you know, three or four years. And, and he probably had it before then as well, but he just happened to be at a premiership winning team. Um, he's brought that to our team um, and, and we're now getting the benefit of it. And, and, and we've got better players, courtesy of it. Daryl, when you see that and when you're watching it, and especially when you're watching it that close, what are you actually looking at? Are you looking at what you think you're seeing on the training pitch? How much of it is it improvised? How much of it they've just practised and practised this? Oh, they do practise and practise. One point in particular, a couple of weeks ago, Dallin Watkins is now and the captain's runner watched him and he was hanging out wide for a kick from Sean Johnson like he scored in the Canberra game, you know, swanning around on the wing. But then they quickly changed the play on the last play and he sprinted back infield and then came back on the angle and, and ran and put the ball down in the corner. And I actually said to him, I said, oh, said great detail, mate, well done. So I'm a bit of a nerd. I watch other, other bits and pieces when I watch the game. But my big... Um, point from the game on the weekend was Wade Egan. His, his passing, um, you know, they were 25 metres long, some of those passes, uh, and they were right in front of Sean the whole time. Um, and that, especially in the first 15 minutes of the game, it was spot on, but we weren't playing well. We put a couple of balls down, had a bad play of the ball, and we're a little bit under the pump from Parramatta. But the width of his passing to start the game and, and the accuracy of it was just spot on. So, you know, like, 
I, I sometimes watch a game a little bit differently um, to what what you do when you're sitting up having ten beers in row five and sure. uh, up the back of the grandstand. But um, yeah, no. And so some of that detail has been so spot on. And I think you know that for, for me, Wade. Um, he he's a big cog to this team in terms of that execution. And, and if you think of it, the first pass always comes from dummy half. So if you don't get that right, well, you don't get step two and three right, do you? So, no, I thought his game was outstanding. He, much, and he ran well, too, in the second half. How much of that execution comes from, from confidence as well, that uh, when it comes off, when you're playing well, that, that just the adrenaline rush, rush you get from that, the players are up on their toes, they want it again. Yeah, oh, of course. You know, it, it is. If, if everything's clicking and going well, um, then, you know, you, you're in a heightened sense of, um, you know, confidence. And but, but then again, when things don't go well, it's key as well to know that, hey, but we can do this. This is no problem. We, we nine times out of ten get this right. So let's just start that uh, sequence again, heading towards nine or ten times in a row. So they, they move pretty quickly. But um, they, they are a far superior team in terms of execution um, than we've seen, which is, which is awesome to watch. Have you also noticed, or when you're down there, I mean, this is the, the, you know, this is the great thing about yakking to you, because I know that you look at it and see things differently. A, a, another level of fitness as well is, I mean, because that's been the word that this team is so much fitter. We've seen that being able to absorb on defence and then counterattack and that. But is it something visible to you? Um, I think if, uh, generally in terms of a, a fitness um, or the ability to su- sustain, you know, a, a lot of defence and what have you, and then turn around and attack and, and change, you know, the momentum from being on defence to attack and being under deep pressure was exactly what happened on Friday night. So in the first 15 minutes, Parramatta pretty much owned us a bit. They were smashing into um, Luke on the on the left edge, and they were getting a you know away with. Um, a good metres up through the middle but we sort of held our nerve and come back and come back over the top of them we did it again in the Canberra game too went to the Canberra game at half time in Canberra down by a couple of points and just scored a try just before half time we were never going to be beaten in that second half and the, the confidence of the guys you know to play big minutes so Mitch Barnett what he went nearly 65 minutes um on the weekend Tom Harris always goes you know close to 80 at the ankle um got a bit of a breather courtesy of an injury which is probably a good thing for him to you know, let some other guys sort of have some game time Adam Fanua Blake so you've got some big guys there who are playing really really big minutes and it's going to be hard to, to get minutes on the field for, for guys like you know Tom Ali uh, Murata Nuakore uh, come back in two weeks and he's going to get a start so you know that's a good sign for a team uh, if you've got all your middles chunking out huge huge big sort of minutes and, and you're at the back half of the year then, you know, we haven't even mentioned, you know, players like Jackson Ford and, and a couple of guys who are really, you know, having the best season they've had for a little while as well. So, um, yeah, it all it all sits really nicely in terms of, you know, all those little key indicators, you know, heading towards the back of the year. DJ Halligan is with his premiership winner, of course. Sideline on the weekend. Luke Metcalf as well. You mentioned him there. I don't want to put the mocker on this guy. I don't want to put the devil in curse on him, but by <laughs> God, he was good. He was so good, Daryl. You've, you've done it already. Well, I'm, 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 <laughs> there it is. I'm hoping to reverse the curse. I love watching, I love watching a, a, a good young electric player like that play with confidence, take it to the line, look at the guy's eyes, move his shoulders, get his weight off balance, you know, fool him with the look and then the double pump. It's brilliant to watch. I um, had a chat with um, Andrew Webster about uh, Luke uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, and I actually, in, in an interview, I asked him, you know, what's his role today? He said, and he, and he told me exactly what we all knew. He said, uh, his greatest strength is his, his support play. You know what I mean? He's just got so much pace and um, he's elusive when he runs um, and what have you. And he just straight out told me, you know, what we already knew. But he's got more more than that. He was just sort of keying it down. He's got a good kicking game. He can provide an option on the on the left for Sean. He can probably be a little bit more dominant if he wanted him to be in the kicking game. However, you know, when Sean plays well, Sean um, runs, runs the cutter and runs the game. So you don't want to take too much away from him. Um, and so, yeah, so no, he's been, you know, he's had a hamstring injury um, for the first part of the year. Um, and uh, Tamari Martin was obviously in the mix, um, who's subsequently injured at, at the moment as well. But no, Luke's been, he's always been a talent. I mean, uh, Cronulla Jr., um, one thing, there was a comment around, you know, most halves, as they learn the game and get thrown out there into the middle, they struggle a little bit in defence. And, and, and numbers will always come at him. 
as they do, they'll always come and t- try and tire your playmakers out. Like, you know, the defence always tries to line up Sean Johnson these days. Um, so all those sort of things come. But And Luke will get better and better at that as he gets more, you know, first grade experience. But um, he uh, he was under the pump there in the first 20 minutes of the game. But he, he stood up. And if you have a look at the, the stats, the stats say that he had no missed tackles. He had plenty of bumps, so he got bumped off, though. <laughs> So, but uh, yeah, no, he's um, he's quite a talent, and he's got you know such good agility and speed. So he's uh, he's a footballer. How important for the team to bounce back from last week with these three games, Souths, and then the Eels, and and then the Sharks, because we had three losses in a row to three really tough teams, Storm and 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 uh, Roosters and Penrith uh, earlier on in the season. So to, you know, as soon as you lose, to bounce back and win again that next game, how 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 very important is that for this team? Yeah, it is. You know, I mean, you know, back-to-back losses carry you know, a lot of weight um, and there's a lot of days in between. So two, two weeks have been on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Um, I think the m- most important thing, Dev, moving forward is the, uh, is the next two games. Um, so Cronulla, um, uh, well entrenched in the, in the top four, followed by Canberra, who have, you know, haven't been beat since we, we tailed them up in Canberra um, about a month ago. Um, and so the next two games, and then they go into a bye, um, are really, really important. Um, they're both home games, uh, so that you know should bounce in their favour. Um, and the Canberra one in particular is a really short turnaround. So Cronulla on Sunday, followed by Canberra on a Friday night. So um, those two games set up the season particularly well. Um, but if you know, if you ask the guys, the sort of the ethos coming out of out of the group, oh no, just one game at a time, and we'll worry about Cronulla this week. And sure. then, you know, I get that as well. Yeah, I get that as well. But in, in an overall sense, these next two games are really important. These next two games, you win both, you you possibly be in the top four. You win one, you you you'll make the eight. Got to mention also, after getting a sixty-six nil a panting the week before for your doggies to bounce back against the rabbits, mate. Well done. Hey, happy, yeah, no, happy. No, yeah. Uh, and over over South Sydney as well. Yeah, no, it was good. Matt Burton on fire with the boot. Um, South Sydney, you know, you could claim that they, like Parramatta, um, were stripped of um, a lot of their star players, courtesy of Origin, um, which was played on Wednesday night. Um, but you still got to front up and win. I mean, the Dogs have had a, um, a bit of an up-and-down year in terms of player and transitions. And You know, I think Matt Burton had his um, fifth um, Harv's partner and Toby Sexton, who only arrived at the club from the Gold Coast about ten days ago. Um, so yeah, so there's been a lot of changes in the in the dogs lineup, um, and I'm, I actually I think there's going to be some more changes moving into next year as well. So there's a big transitional um, exit and also entry of players coming and going. So it's going to take the doggies a little while to sort of bounce back into the right area of the table, but um, it's at least in progress. And finally, look, I, you know, I know that a lot of people say, hey, they don't, they, you know, they don't really mind they, if the players don't talk pre and post match and in, in the game. Look, I, I do, and I think, you know, it, to me it's such a shame that this industrial dispute is being taken out on the fans. Like, I mean, the fans just pay, we just pay our money to watch. We love the players, we love the team. I want to hear from these guys. A whole weekend without, without it just seemed really weird. <laughs> I mean, it just seemed weird, man. Oh, I- I so totally agree. So I went to the game on the weekend and I'm going, I'm only going to get to talk to myself. I don't want to do that. Yeah, (laughs) that's it. Um, But yeah, then I'm looking around for a couple of coaches to talk to. Um, There's a lot at play. I I don't know really all the intricate details of, you know, the Players Association, how it sort of works in terms of um, where they get to at the bargaining table or the the negotiation table and how much power they have. You know, the NRL has total control, really. In, in my mind, um, and it's a shame that um, it's got to this level. But we we love hearing from them. I mean, there was milestone games there at the Warriors that we we would have dearly loved to hear about Sean's 200th and how his daughter um, gave him and presented him his jersey in Auckland um, before going away and Mum being pregnant and you know Adam Fanua Blake playing 150, Dylan Walker chalked up 200 games and Wade Egan also you know chalks up a a hundred odd games. So, I mean, there was so much that we could have, you know, expanded more into to our audience, uh, I guess, and that's the people back home, um, even even out of that match. Um, but, you know, it wasn't to be, and, you know, hopefully they sort it out. And if they don't sort it out before Origin, it's going to cost a lot of money to broadcast this. It's going to really, really get angry. Um, but, you know, we all live together in a 